<laughs> okay, let's get this party started, shall we? Hey you, my name is Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Now I asked my drone audience, what do you want to learn more about when it comes to drones? You guys came back with a bunch of great questions, and today I'm going to answer a handful of them. If I don't get to yours today, don't feel bad, I'll get to it next time. But before we get started, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos go up. a very good question. How do you find whales and then how do you keep up with them with your drone? Well, for me, that was needed, sorry. I have the luxury of working with an experienced team of whale watchers outside of Dana Point, California. What I like to do is always work with a team that knows where to find these whales because if you just jump on a boat and try to look for them, it's not that easy. So we jump on a boat, we go outside the harbor, and I typically find whales anywhere between let's say two miles to 25 miles outside of the harbor in Dana Point. Once we find these whales, it's really exciting, but oftentimes I have to do a couple things, such as recalibrate my compass because I might deal with some magnetic interference being on the boat. So once I recalibrate my compass, I put a full battery in, I go to the back of the boat, I talk to the captain, hey captain, where is the whale? He'll say, hey, the whale is 12 o'clock, about 200 yards out. Let's say the boat's going this direction. I'll launch my drone off the back of the boat, facing away from the boat's direction it's going. Once I get it up in the air, about 200 feet high, I turn the drone around and I make sure that I have line of sight of the drone and the drone has line of sight of my boat. Because you always wanna know where your drone is in the air in case something goes wrong. I have my drone follow the direction the boat's going and I keep my drone high enough where I'm able to potentially see where the whale is at. I usually open up the aperture to about 2.8 because when I'm doing a top-down view, the water is pretty dark and I'm shooting manually. So I open up the aperture pretty wide to try to lighten the water and really find that whale. Once I spot the whale, I keep up with it with my drone in that direction. And it's just so exciting, but you just have to stay calm. I'll either face the drone this direction over the whale going sideways or over this direction looking down. One of the things that's really important is that you fly your drone down at about 35 to 40% battery because you might get some unexpected gusts of wind and your boat might get some turbulence and when it comes to that, it's really difficult to catch a drone when you deal with some crazy sets. I face the drone away from me, I'm on the back of the boat, it flies down and then I fly it back towards me with the boat sitting still and then I catch the drone underneath the belly like this. It's important to fly it back early enough where your battery will won't die because nothing is more stressful than flying back at 20% battery, being worried that the drone might just fall out of the sky and land in the water. So I highly suggest flying it down at about 35% battery. How do I store my images and content? This is a question I get a lot and actually it's a great one. I think it's best to start early and learning how to name your files and how to back them up when you start taking photos because I've had to learn the hard way. For example, now I'm starting to learn how to organize all my video files now that I'm shooting a lot of video. And it is tedious. So one thing I learned early on in my career as a photographer is that it's important to have external hard drives. When I first started taking photos, I would just store all my content on my laptop, my MacBook Pro. And my MacBook Pro would slow down so much because I was starting to take raw images and raw images are huge. I think that external hard drives are essential with the creative process. I have about 10 to 15 external hard drives that range from two terabyte to eight terabyte. At some point though, I knew I needed to step up my game because I just had so much content that needed to go through that I I wanted to have something that was bigger and could handle a lot more content and that I could store at home. I learned the hard way when I had a hard drive that was eight terabytes fall from my desk. It just completely failed. And I tried to get all that content back and I couldn't, which really sucked because it was a year's worth of content with families, weddings, and newborn sessions. And I couldn't get that back. So I learned the hard way that you should always back up your content on more than one hard drive. I'm happy to provide my recommendations. You can see it below this video. When it comes to naming my content, I always title the folder by the month, the day, then the year, and then dash by the topic or location that I was shooting at. What's the drone bag that I travel with? What I love to use the most is this low pro bag. It's perfect because when I'm on the go and I just want to pull out my camera quickly, I can either take the bag off my back and unzip completely on the back of it, 
and get easy access to my drone Mavic 2 Pro bag, my camera, whether I'm using my 1DX Mark II or the 5D Mark III, or I could just simply fling it on my side and unzip on the side and have easy access to my camera right here. Um, it's just very, very convenient, especially when I'm on the go. I carry my drone on the plane. By law, you should always carry on your batteries. Um, they're flammable and them on. What I do is I like to store my drone in here and then I store additional batteries within these pockets and I have my memory cards my white balance card or anything else that I need depending on what I'm shooting what do I prefer flying my Mavic 2 Pro or my Phantom 4 Pro most of the time I like to fly my Mavic 2 Pro there's just more bells and whistles you have more intelligent flight modes it makes it easier when you want to travel with one bag and not have multiple bags I'm able to just put that little puppy in here safe and sound and carry it on the plane however when I'm flying off a boat over dolphins and whales. I like to use my Phantom 4 Pro just because it makes it easier to hand launch the drone when you're able to hold on to the legs and launch it that way and then hand catch it that way because oftentimes when I'm catching the Mavic 2 Pro, I'm catching the belly of the drone and you have to worry about hitting the propellers of the drone. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on new videos and feel free to comment below if you have any drone related questions or stories to tell. I would also love to hear your feedback on what topic I should cover next. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.